Final leg. So let's talk about that Birmingham Diamond League that just went down today. Now, we saw some, you know, really mixed performances. The weather wasn't great. We saw some wind, you know, not really a high quality meet, but we did see some great matchups and great head to heads. Let's start off with that women's 100 meters. Of course, Elaine Thompson Hera was supposed to be going up against Dina Asher Smith, Sharika Jackson, Gabby Thomas, and a couple others. But Thompson Hera had to pull out of the meet. She said just because of some injuries or potential th injuries, not exactly sure, but hopefully we'll see her for the rest of the season. This turned out to be all about Dina Asher Smith. Now, in the 100 meters, she managed to get the win here in 11.11. .11. Not a fast time. She just edged out Sharika Jackson, who ran 11.12. But I think this is a huge performance for Asher Smith. She's been struggling with injuries. Remember, last year, right before Tokyo, she got injured. And then in Tokyo, she wasn't able to get through the rounds to make it to the 100-meter final. Couldn't run the 200 meters. She did a run on a 4 by one But... As she's coming into 2022, there were some question marks. She's been dropping down, ran a 400, a 300, ran the 200 in Doha not too long ago. This win against a high quality field is a big win for her. And I think bodes well for what might be to come when we get to Eugene 2022. Now, right behind her, like I said, Sharika Jackson, probably the third best Jamaican in the world right now. She ran 11.12 seconds. She had her typical kind of second half of the race to really come on strong, just missing out. Dina Astra Smith had an amazing start and held Sharika Jackson off. And then in third place, we did have Daryl Nita, who's been, you know, one of the really consistent athletes over the past couple years, made the Tokyo final in 100 meters. But here she finished third in 11.14 seconds. Behind them, we had a set of Americans. And I think this really kind of does back up the idea that probably many others are thinking as well. The Americans are really struggling in terms of consistency against the rest of the world. Again, you have a plethora of fast athletes, right? Gabby Thomas, Makai Briscoe, they both ran here, Cambria Sturgis. But when it comes to competing against the rest of the world, right, times are irrelevant. This race wasn't really about times. Against the rest of the world, they're not showing that consistency and dominance to really put themselves in medal contention. Now, it's relatively early, still, you know, middle of end of May. We have all the way until June and July, the July when the world championships are. But I think we really have to look at, can one of the U.S. Met women really get themselves into medal contention when we're talking about Dina Asher Smith, when we're talking about the Jamaicans? Keep a lookout for the women's 100 meters, of course. Still on the 100 meters, let's move over to the men's 100 meters this time. This was all about Trayvon Bramel. Of course, we had other athletes like Johan Blake. We had Andre de Grasse, right? They were in the field, but this was supposed to be all about Trayvon Bramel. Unfortunately, he false started out the gate. It was pretty blatant. He was kind of showing himself in terms of like he knew he false started, but he might be able to get some leeway. Maybe they let him run under protest. You know, they kicked him out, right? rightfully so. It was a blatant false start from Trayvon Bramel. We unfortunately didn't get to see him run. Following up though, Zarnell Hughes. He also far started right after Bromel. Hughes has been having some false start issues. There have been a couple races, most notably the Tokyo Olympic final last year, where he's been false starting. Fortunately, didn't get to see him run, but turned out to be a pretty good race, I thought, for the most part. Johan Blake got out pretty, pretty fast, was leading the race for the most part. And then Aaron Brown from Canada, he managed to grab the win here, 10.13 seconds. Again, the times at this meet are really not relevant. It's the head to heads, it's the matchups. Behind Blake, um, who got second place in 10.18 seconds, we saw the rest of the field, Jerome Blake, Andre DeGrasse. We saw uh, you know a bunch of others who were below 10.20 uh, seconds. So no fast times, but hopefully we're able to see Bromel run in a couple other races. We've already seen him run a slightly windy 9.7. So hopefully we're able to see him get down back to that. Now, let's jump back to the start of the meet, the women's 400 meter hurdles. This was all about Dalila Muhammad. There was no one else who was really going to challenge her in this race, and she really showed that. She got out with the win in 54.54 seconds. Not a fast time. She's already run 53.88 seconds, which is number two in the world this year. But I like seeing Dalila Muhammad run so consistently. She was injured early on last year, even in 2019, right before um, the U.S. Championships and then, of course, the World Championships. She got injured um, that year as well. So to see her healthy, to see her running consistently, again, times are irrelevant. She already has the World Championship by, so she doesn't have to worry about U.S. trials. She's going to go to Eugene. She's going to be, you know, co-favorite with Sydney McLaughlin. We haven't seen McLaughlin open up. Maybe McLaughlin is probably the slight favorite, depending on, you know, who you're asking what you think but Muhammad running very consistently running very often I think this bodes well for her and she might be making some real big noise when we get to Eugene later on this summer now let's move down to the men's 400 meters 
Nothing really spectacular here, not a crazy huge high quality field, but we did see Matthew Hudson Smith. He won the race here in 45.32 seconds. He beat out Bryce Dedman and Kamari Montgomery, who both edged out Vernon Norwood, who was actually leading the race early on for the most part, up until you know the last couple meters. Um, and again, they got second, third, fourth, respectively, in terms of Deadman, Montgomery, and Norwood. Nothing too crazy, but a good, qu good quality field there for the most part. Then we saw the men's 110 meter hurdles. Now, this was a huge kind of matchup in terms of the 2016 Olympic champion in Omar McLeod going up against the 2021 Olympic champion in Hansel Parchment. McLeod gets a fast start almost always. He's very consistent at the start. He leads the race. But unfortunately here, and this is kind of an issue with him, he hit hurdle six and that really threw off his momentum. He's pretty consistent and kind of notable for hitting a lot of hurdles. But unfortunately, again, that threw off his momentum. That gave Parchment the opportunity to kind of steal that win, which he did in 13.09 seconds. McLeod finished second in 13.17. Now, Parchment's time, that is a world leading performance. And I think this really bodes well for Parchment. Of course, he beat out Grant Holloway at the Olympics last year. Who knows what might happen? Of course, Grant Holloway, in terms of talent and times, is much, much faster. But Parchment is showing that consistency. Remember, Parchment is a 2012 Olympic bronze medalist, the 2015 Olympic silver medalist, and the 20, um, 2021 Olympic gold medalist. So he's been very consistent over the past, really, decade and he is showing no signs of slowing down. So keep a lookout for Parchment. We're going to see what he's able to do when we get to Eugene this year. Finally, let's end off with that women's long jump. Now, I think this was probably arguably the performance of the meet when we're talking about, you know, just the sprints and the jumps. We have Malika Mihambo, 2019 world champion, 2021 Olympic champion. She managed to jump 7.09 meters on her fourth jump in the long jump here. This is a huge performance for her. She, this is farther than she's jumped in at any point through 2021, right? And that's the time that she won Olympic gold. In addition, this is her fourth farthest jump of her entire career. Back in 2019, that was probably her best season ever when she won the World Championship gold. She jumped 7.11, 7.16, and 7.30 meters. All in 2019, and that 7.16 was an ancillary jump uh, in Doha. So one of her, you know, jumps getting up to that 7.30. But of course, it's a world lead. It puts her probably in the position as the favorite for the World Championship gold if she wasn't already in that position. And I think this is really going to bold well as she progresses. That personal best of 7.30 meters from 2019, it's a long way out. But if she's already hitting 7.09 meters in May we are definitely going to see something big for her. So keep a lookout for Mahambo. There's a lot of other ladies who are right below her, but she's definitely going to be the favorite going into the World Championships this year. All right, so that's just a recap of the Birmingham Diamond League. Again, nothing too spectacular on the track, nothing crazy in terms of sprint times, hurdle times, um, or anything like that. Mihambo with the jump of 7.09, I think that's probably the highlight of the meet. Make sure you go in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite performance from the meet was. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.